subscribe to our youtube channel and hit on bell icon to get the latest updates on qa automation side all right so let's quickly implement um navigation bar as well just like how we have done for footer navigation so same thing you have to start by extending abstract component okay so once you give abstract component then it complains that uh, it has to do some actions like um, import class give me a second so then it again complains that it has to create constructor okay you see that one constructor is created for you because I told you right when you are extending any parent class you have to first call that parent class constructor in your own constructor isn't it so driver comma section element these two elements we get from travel home page right just like how we have done earlier for get footer nav same thing you have to do it now for navigation bar as well so you just need to send two details one is a driver and next is that section element so earlier for footer this is the section element similarly you have to get that section element for that header also so that you know selenium can nicely switch that section and search in that section only whenever you write any methods in that navigation header class okay so let's spy this entire section and we realized that okay so is there any special id for this so to handle directly yes so buttons you see that id equals to buttons this is the class I think ID equals to buttons is identifying that entire header section. If you carefully observe that header, ID equals to buttons. Okay, so this is the section element. Now let's quickly write it here by this is footer nav section element. Okay, let's differentiate by dot ID and the buttons. So send this section element as a second argument perfect now inside this class the driver and section element will reach here and then you are sending it to your abstract so you can copy the same method of footer navigation get flight attribute I am not going to change any code here I'll just use same flight attribute and for flights also this is the CSS right same CSS we have in our navigation bar also okay so our goal now is to find out the class attribute of these flights so if you spy here flights um, you can see that title equals to flights same CSS but this time when I do get attribute class equals to selected okay so earlier we got group traveler as a class name because we are handling footer stuff okay good so I brought same details here as well. Everything looks good and an abstract component, um, it's already defined. You see that I did not make any other change. Your uh, navigation bar is now ready. So, so simple, right? Once you define abstract component class, so automatically it takes care for all the remaining. So now from travel homepage, when you call this get navigation bar, let me go to the demo test. So from travel homepage, so you have now validated footer navigation attribute right so get navigation bar which is on the header and then you can ask to get flight attribute again now when you run this code for the first step selenium will come to footer section and it will validate there for your second step selenium will go to header section and will validate there but you did not provide you want to go header or footer you just simply provided one css selector which is both common for header and footer but still selenium is able to differentiate what it needs should i go to header or should i go to footer everything selenium is deciding how that's how we designed framework with the help of this section attributes because whenever it tries to execute any method uh, in your page components first it will go to that section element okay on that section element we are trying to identify so when you try to identify you are using custom find element instead of directly using driver dot find element 
so this custom find element is doing trick of navigating okay so come back to demo test you are all set you just made a minor changes and now your code is ready to switch footer and header let's see let me run this test and fingers crossed this time it should give me the two outputs first one it should say group traveler and second one it should say select okay test is passed check your console logs here you go this is how selection is happening now let's do one thing now you want to click it so if you want to just select this flight change it to dot click so that it will just click on that home page okay that is the one now let's actually get links count okay now when you try to get a link count now in a crow path when you say anchor a so there are total 152 links in entire page but you have a requirement that get me only footer links count so right now in a footer there are two links for each section this is one link anchor and this is one link two so that means one two three four five six seven so seven twos are total 14 links are present in your footer section okay now when you get a requirement to check footer links count if it is equals to 14 then if you simply say anchor a anchor a stands for tag name but with anchor a total 152 links are there but if you ask you to get only footer then you have to write some lines of selenium code to tell your selenium go to the footer section and that section find out the uh, links with anchor t anchor tag a so you have to write a lot of code to figure out and to uh, filter only footer link count which is 14 but with our framework it's very very simple okay so what i will just do i'll go to footer navigation i will say by links um links and then say by dot css you can just say anchor a okay and then you can write one method public void get link count and here inside you can say find element use the custom if you use custom find element your search scope will be restricted to your footer section only find element here again if you want to get link count you have to use plural right find elements not singular you have to use plural but the custom code what you have written is only for find element so you should also write similar code for find elements also okay it's very simple guys so just use find elements and here section element dot find elements the plural one okay and now when you say find elements this written list right so move your cursor and you say um change it to the list let's do one thing here so say list of web elements and then you can import that class java.util and that's it error is gone now come back to your footer navigation and the, we have developed a custom method called find elements now find elements dot get me the size okay let's print this size perfect so what you did you did not write any complicated locator you just mentioned give me the link count anchor a and if you want to get footer link count and all that your framework will take care what all you need to do is just go and call that in your uh, test case that from travel home page go to the footer navigation and get me the link count that's all you have to describe okay so and if you run this test this will just give you the count of footer section but not entire page okay let's see um demo test run this test again so that's the beauty of this framework if you want to write the standalone code to get footer count you have to at least end up writing five to six lines of code and go to the console output and you will see only 14 links why because it scanned only in the footer section but not header section or entire page 
now let's say you want um, links count only in this uh, header section how many links are there here one two three four five six I think technically uh, let me cross check there is one anchor okay total six links are present here right okay so now use the same CSS selector again you need not again write any complicated object with a parent referral use same links and use it for your navigation bar also okay and get the same method again what you have in your footer because uh, right now you have a find elements custom method already for you and your framework now will go and give you the link count in that uh, foot navigate header section okay so you can just ask me get me the link count get navigation bar and get me the link count and that's it and now when you run this this will give you the both count of header and footer so this is what I am trying to accomplish and this can be accomplished if you follow the single responsibility pattern okay so divide your entire page into different page components and use a section elements use abstract components use custom find element find elements so that way you will re get rid of overhead of writing complicated locators you can write simple locators and make your framework to frame all this locator at runtime without you worrying about all that stuff and you see that six links exactly it given six but when you do driver dot it will scan an entire page and you will get 153 total which i just shown but this is not a good practice of writing sysout println in your page objects for demonstration purpose i have written here i would recommend you to write the sysout println in your test case but not um, in your page object okay so and you can return this so return string so that's good habit of returning but not printing anything in your page components so same thing apply it in your um, footer navigation as well okay so both methods are now updated with returns come back to your test and here so you can add sysout println just like how we have added for step number 19 make sure you add for line number 20 21 and 22 also i hope you can do this in offline right i can still do it here uh, very quick let's quickly revise what we have learned in this section so if you read this definition again so we have implemented single responsibility principle design pattern where class should have responsibility over a single part of the program now if you go back to your editor so this is our class and the duty of this main page is to just direct to its page components okay this is one single responsibility and footer navigation only deals about that specific section one responsibility and navigation bar will only take care of the header section so like this for the single base home page you can have multiple page components and each class does its own job okay now if you check back the remaining points so srp helps developer write code that are decoupled where each class has its own job which we have seen and encapsulate responsibilities to other classes so in our case our main travel home page have its own job and it encapsulated its responsibilities to other page components if specification of this job changes developer make changes to that specific class only so here if there are any changes in the future on navigation bar on the header so if you make any changes so that will impact the only methods present in this class so if you want to perform any regression you can perform around these methods only but footer navigation will not be impacted isn't it this is completely separate class and it is operating on different object and this navigation bar is operating on different object so any change in this now let's say tomorrow uh, accidentally developer have broke this flights 
okay and change will be there only in this navigation bar and only header related tests will fail but footer navigation will not fail because this title equals to flights is not touched because it's in separate class but if you try to have all these in one single class and all your methods footer and header referring to one variable of flights if any change made in this then that will impact all the methods which are relied on this but now because of this SRP principle only that component that file only will get disturbed and you can only focus that so that's what it says developer make changes to that specific class only right and when a class is highly coupled with more responsibilities which we did not do now any small change to requirement could lead to many changes which we just uh, saw that that would cause an issue okay so if you follow this approach then change is less likely to break entire application and as other classes should still be doing their job as before okay so that is why this is one of the highly suggested pattern and we have successfully accomplished and injected this design pattern into our selenium automation framework apart from that we have also implemented one cool feature that Selenium also will look into that section only instead of looking outside of that section. All the trick has been done by this customized find element which we are getting from our abstract component. We are inheriting that parent abstract component and we are using these features. Okay. So instead of find element, if you try to put driver dot find element, then it will just behave like normal Selenium test in searching an entire page. So this custom elements are helping us to restrict our scope and helping us to achieve this single responsibility future in very efficient way all right so that's pretty much about this design pattern in the next section let's talk about another design pattern and continue developing this framework okay so my goal here is that in this entire page i will show few design patterns and then build a framework so for dividing the components i shown srp principle right now there is some section here like one way round trip multi trip so for these handling there is another nice design pattern so that i will discuss and let's enhance and extend this framework with a number of design patterns subscribe to our youtube channel and hit on bell icon to get the latest updates on qa automation side